Have you ever wanted to invest in cryptocurrencies but found the process too complicated? If the answer is yes, then this video is for you. Hello, my name is Markos and today we'll take a look at crypto ETFs and how they work. So ETFs overall are already established when we think about traditional markets. But how do they work under a crypto and a blockchain perspective? Well, we can think of that as a way in which the crypto market can be bridged into traditional finance. So crypto ETFs are an easy way in which institutional and traditional investors can gain exposure to crypto using frame tools and exchanges they are already used to. And they will be doing that under a regulated environment, which is of course very appealing to them as well. But moving forward, a crypto ETF usually is built on top of two main frameworks. So it can be either, either futures based or it can be spot. If it is futures based, what's, happen what's happening here is that the fund is actually investing on contract agreements between buyers and sellers that agree to do so at a certain price at a certain date. So the price tracking here is indirect as the fund is actually not holding custody of the underlying crypto itself. And at the end of the day, that means that a futures based crypto ETF won't increase the demand for the crypto itself because you actually don't have to buy it. On the other hand, a spot ETF actually holds custody of the crypto. So the price tracking now is direct and it is much more accurate. And as you can probably imagine, that will be translated into an increase in the demand for the crypto as now the fund managers actually have to buy it. So that's very beneficial for the market overall. But either way, if you are buying a crypto ETF, you are gaining easy exposure to crypto, abstracting lots of the complexities around it, especially around self-custody. You should be aware though that you will be paying some fees to fund managers and that you actually don't have the ownership of the underlying crypto, but rather is being exposed to its volatility. But moving forward, a very tricky discussion around crypto regulation is on how we can classify this type of asset. So here I brought to you some parameters so that we can better understand how to classify it. So usually assets are classified as a security or a commodity. And for the securities, I brought to you something called the Howey test. So if an asset is an investment of money, if you are buying it, expecting profits in the future, if it is being built around a common enterprise and if its value grows due to the effort of others, then you can say that this asset is a security and securities are often stocks and bonds. For the commodities, on the other hand, we actually don't have a Howey test equivalent, but we can also think of some parameters to better understand them. So if it possesses interchangeability, if it is used in the production of other assets, if it possesses inherent value, and if it's being traded across commodity markets, then we can say also for sure that this asset is a commodity and great and a great example of a commodity is the gold but what but the tricky thing here is that if we take different crypto projects and try to fill them under those parameters and under those classifications we will see that they will often push the boundaries of what we know about securities and commodities so it's no easy task to do that and it's a very ongoing and hot discussion around crypto regulating around crypto, crypto regu regulation. So we should stay in tune with that for the next months and years. But moving forward, a huge milestone towards crypto institutional adoption, of course, was the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETFs by the SEC in January. And as we've mentioned previously, being spot means that the funds are actually buying Bitcoin now. And therefore, there is an increase in the demand for it. And as you can see here, since the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, the price has increased quite significantly. It's difficult to say that this was the only reason because Bitcoin also has its own economic cycle, but it definitely played a huge part in the, appreci the, appreciation, the appreciation of the asset and how it is performing in the market right now. So of course, this was a huge milestone towards the crypto environment development, but especially towards institutional adoption. But moving forward, in a turn of events, what also happened this year was the Ethereum ETFs being approved by the SEC. And 
Bitcoin, for example, is often regarded as a commodity due to its decentralized nature and the fact that there is no common enterprise built on it. For Ethereum, however, the discussion is a little bit more controversial, especially after they changed their consensus mechanism to proof of stake, work, working much more close to a stock. But either way, now that the SEC has approved the ETFs, the market has turned quite optimistic that the SEC will acknowledge Ether as a commodity in the future. But the question here is, will we see the same fund flows going into Ethereum ETFs as we've seen into Bitcoin ETFs? So the first thing to notice here is that Ethereum ETFs aren't quite as popular as Bitcoin ETFs. So, but either way, we can use Bitcoin as a benchmark to estimate the cumulative ETF fund flow into Ethereum ETFs. So analyzing here the market cap of Bitcoin, of Bitcoin at launch and the current market cap, we can arrive at this share of initial market cap at 1.5%. And applying that to the market cap of Ethereum at BTC ETF launch, we arrive at a cumulative ETF fund flow of $4.5 billion, which is of course also very considerable and roughly a third of what we've seen towards Bitcoin spot ETFs. But that's just an estimation. So we arrived at the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ping me on my social media. If you have any thoughts around crypto ETFs, please let me know. And if you are a builder and you're trying to enhance your token incentives, don't hesitate on contacting Economics Design so that we can help you out. See you in another video. Bye bye.